All right, we have uh, one more sneak. This is our last sneak. This stuff you really, especially if you're doing video, you want to be able to, you want this right now. It's super cool. It's called Project Cloak. And here to present it tonight is Jeff Oxholm. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. So at Adobe, I'm just a humble research engineer. But let's just imagine for a moment that I'm also a talented and oh-so-handsome video producer. And I went to Russia and took this you know, beautiful shot of a cathedral. Uh, it's great. You know, it's almost good enough to be reasonably priced, easy to download stock footage, which it may in fact be. Uh, but it's got this horrible spotlight blocking the cathedral the whole time, right? So I I'd love to get rid of it. How, how can we do that? Should we even try? Should we? Yes. <laughs> So to give some context, I'm going to go ahead and just open up one frame in Photoshop. There, if I can get it, Photoshop. And I'll select the spotlight here and the top here and use the incredible content-aware fill. And we'll see this result is pretty good. Um, I'd want to touch it up. I could use the stamp tool here, because there's a lot of repeated visual elements to help me fix some of the things I don't like. Uh, that'll take me a minute. Do you guys want to hang out with me while I stumble through that on stage? No. <laughs> and how about for the 99 other frames in this video? I would guess not. OK, well, I went ahead and did that backstage just now. And this is what that result looks like if you put all those frames back to back. And this is obviously not going to work, right? It's too obvious. There's like some sort of um, force field effect. It looks like the shape of a, of a the spotlight. Predator. But it's not. The individual frames aren't so bad, right? We, each of them looks pretty good. But because they're done independently, we end up with this really weird effect. And that's what makes this so hard. You not only have to nail each frame, but you have to be precisely consistent over time from frame to frame. Um, you know, what else could I do? I guess. I could also um, use one of the plane tracking features. And in this case, there's a lot of depth, so I might have to track multiple different planes and then be really careful about the seams between them to paste over uh, the spotlight. There's probably some of you in the room that have gone through this. And you know that at the end, no matter what you do, you end up having to tweak each frame independently. So it's a lot of work. And this is the motivation for Cloak, right? We want to make the easiest possible way to remove something from video using existing workflows. Um, so how do, you, how do you start an existing workflow? You need to select something. So now I'm going to go into After Effects. And you, know, you, could, use, you could use Rotobrush. Uh, I am not very good at that. So I went ahead and used the Polygon Mask tool. And you can see that I've just tracked that through the scene. right? And since this is a research prototype, I have to render out that mask. But I'm going to go ahead and get this started. I'm going to run Cloak. And you'll see the only two inputs are the source video and the mask. And then I'm just saying I want to output it. And while that's running, I'll show you what that mask looks like. And so you'll see it's just saying these are the pixels that I want Cloak to remove to do something with. And I think that's been enough time. So we'll go back over here and look at the result. And you'll see I've removed this spotlight. Thank you. Uh, so in this case, you know, we're removing something that's sort of freestanding in front of a background, but this will also work in cases where it's something's attached. You know, so if you have a stain on your shirt, or you've got um, graffiti on the wall you want to remove, or maybe your, your drone has a shadow you want to remove. Uh, in this example, I'm removing the strap from the guy's backpack. And this is kind of a subtle result, but I hope you're impressed because it's really hard. We never see behind the strap. So we have to imagine what it looks like behind the strap and then you know, convincingly propagate that through time even as the guy moves and the lighting changes. Um, yeah, so this is, a, this is a hard one to do. Wow. And could you still use that on the people? Could you? Yeah, we can, we can remove the people, yep. See? Where did they go? They're being tracked, and then they disappear. They got taken by aliens. <laughs> exactly. That's amazing. <laughs> That's what's amazing, right? So this is like content-aware fill for video is effectively what's going on here, wow. which is awesome. 
it's actually beyond that, as you have shown, Jeff, which is sure. super impressive, right? Imagine, I mean, I'm sure you could imagine maybe some use cases for this. I don't know. Obviously, we're dealing with video where you need to remove things, whether it's a 360 video where you have the camera, because you're sometimes getting the tripod in the shot, uh, or anything, a boom mic, whatever the case may be. It's like it just takes it right out. So I think this is awesome. What? Dust on the lens, all sorts of things. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's really impressive. It, it is pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Is some of this, uh, like, uh, do you appreciate some of this technology seeing coming off of, like, say, the big sick, uh, you know, sort of starring in a movie and dealing with that whole process? Hopefully you can appreciate, like, some of this technology for a video. You definitely. could actually recast an entire person. Yeah. <laughs> That's you, terrifying. You, you could. <laughs> Please don't give this to any person I have a job with. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Everybody, give him a warm applause.